Hello and welcome to another bubble tutorial. It's been I think since October since the last one so thank you for your patience. I had to learn walking again after a sports injury. So this tutorial is going to be about recursive workflows with bubble. So here the goal is to process lots of data. Just one example is you go to your database and you notice uh, actually I have this thing here and I want to add another field and all existing entries should also have this field populated. So this would be an example use case of such a recursive workflow. So recursive means that the workflow calls itself again and again. An example of this workflow would be, we click a button, we take all page loads. So this might be a thousand or 10,000 or a hundred thousand things all in the same table. And we want to take this and then we want to change is client paying to yes for all those where this is true. So the recursive part is that here in step one, we only take the first item out of the entire list. And in step two, we call the workflow again. And this time we subtract the first item, which we already edited to say is client paying equals yes. And Therefore, we go through this process item for item until we have no more items to edit. So in this case, only when page loads item number two is not empty. So it just calls itself. This is kind of the idea of a recursive workflow. By the way, if we removed this only when, or even worse, if we just Took it, uh, told it to always just take the list of page loads, it will just go through this list for infinity, right? Or well, <laughs> as long as uh, bubble servers allow you. Okay. And just as a comparison, there's also a workflow on a list. So we just went through a recursive workflow where we go item by item and now workflow on a list. To have a look at what this does, I've prepared another button, API on a list. And here we, so before what we selected is schedule API workflow. Here we do a schedule API workflow on a list. So slightly different, we tell it to run on the list again of all page loads. By the way, of course, you could limit it to only take the page loads, so the things in this case created since, I don't know, September 20. So here you could just do September 20, 2021, just as an example, because you have a big data update on this day. And then let's remove it again. We do again current date time, but this time we tell it to do this FAQ page loads, which means that for every list item, it will do this workflow once. And then when we look at the workflow called test edit list, this is again an API workflow. How did we create this? We just click the empty box and click new API workflow. We did that for both. However, for the list one where we told it to work on this FAQ's page loads, we have here a singular page load because it will go through the list item for item and just go through it until it's finished. Whereas here, it goes in a particular order in the recursive one. It first takes the first item, then it takes one away, takes a new first item, then takes one away and takes a new item. What do I mean with this? Let's have a quick look and just uh, click the buttons by making kind of easy example, last edit date. And we can just be the uh, current date time. And we can do that for both. Okay, let's just take this one out for the moment. Okay, so let's press API on a list first. When we press this, what we'll see in the logs if we click now you will see it's doing all these ones at the same time. And then we can click show and eventually it'll be finished because I actually told it to only go through a list of around 150 entries. If this were 
10,000 entries, I would really recommend the recursive workflow and I'll show you why. So here we have all these workflows. They're not finished yet. Here we actually have Bubble figuring out itself the interval bit to wait between the workflows. And eventually when we click refresh, it'll eventually be finished. So, but they all have their own ID as you can see. So we could click cancel on all of them singularly or click on cancel all, which we may not want to do because we may have some workflow which we always want to have running in the background. And this can be cost a lot of capacity. Can we actually see here? Um, no, because the capacity, if I check the five minutes, I go capacity. There are a few workflow runs, but it's nothing bad here. And we maybe went to 3% or 2%, but it's not too bad. I do three minutes ago. Also, it's not too bad because we're not, you know, we're only doing 150 entries. But it's a good place to look in the logs here. Okay, and eventually my expectation is that we'll be finished. It still takes a while. So let's look at kind of what bubble the manual itself tells us about the difference. So a recursive, will, I'll show you, runs one at a time, whereas on a list, as you can see, they all overlap because we can see they're all in the logs, all happening at the same time. This also means that, you know, if you're doing the last edit time and you're appending that, that, you know, first we will, if we do the one with which is recursive, it will first do item number one of the list, then item number two, or item number three, all in a particular order, the order which you gave it here underneath the workflows when you clicked recursive. So here, search for FAQ page loads. Here we could do it always with the newest first, for instance, or always with a is client ping yes being first or something like this. Whereas with the on a list, there is no order. As we saw here in the logs, all are concurrently, which can lead to very different data being produced, of course. For example, for numbering. Okay, and also there's no real way of knowing when all workflows are done. In principle, I'm clicking show here all the time and seeing if it's done. Whereas with the other one, I'll show you later. And so the recursive one, of course, can continue indefinitely, whereas this one is limited by how many ones kind of bubble can do concurrently. And it also times out after five minutes, which is quite a problem because if your list is 10,000 items long, then it will probably not finish. So therefore, on a list is faster for shorter lists of 50 or maybe 200 items, but the recursive one is reliable for long lists. And so, of course, then also the capacity is much higher for on a list because they are concurrently instead of one at a time for recursive. Hoping at some point we finish. Here do we, we see that it's running to an end of the list. So we'll see soon it's finished. I'll just wait a little and then we can click the other one. It's also very good with a recursive one is that we can easily track when it's finished. For example, we could add a count number, which is iteration, we can call it. And this can be number. And then when we run this workflow on recursive, I've just added to the wrong one. Yeah. Iteration. number so we can start with one and then whenever we go through the next one we do iteration plus one and so this knows us helps us know how far we are or even better we can create something which tracks the progress so back end progress and then on the back end progress one we can either create a new thing or also edit something which we, so this is option number one is back in progress. We create a new thing all the time where we know the date 
And also we can, for example, save the iteration, which is the number, which is just iteration. So it kind of goes through the first item, creates a new thing, equals one, and then goes to the second one. This time the new thing will have two and then three, and this allows you to kind of track how far it is. If you also know the max number, how do we know the max number? For example, we just know that when it goes through all FAQ page loads, so the count of this, if we were to click count, this is the max number of iterations it has to go through. So in a similar way, instead of telling it not to kind of stop, we can tell it to stop after item number two is not empty, or we could also do it when the iteration has reached a certain number, such as um, iteration is smaller or equal to all page loads. We can just yeah, page loads count, then it will also stop. On a similar way, we can also actually create the backend progress thing here in step one. And then we can tell it to expect this in the API workflow. And then instead of creating a new backend progress, we can do make changes to thing backend progress and then iteration equals iteration. So it will update this number every time it runs through incrementing it by one after we create it. So here in logs, after we saw this really long list because this was the API workflow on a list which does everything concurrently, it should now be empty. Indeed, it is empty. So now we, we can press our other one. Let's see, we should do here result of step one. So when we press the button, we're gonna create something which tracks the progress and then we're going to take all the page loads iteration one and the thing which we just created and in the workflows change the last edit date of everything to now maybe get rid of this conditional and then we should make this the second number two so then we modify the backend progress to have iteration equals iteration number so it'll just increase all the time and then here we just take the same backend progress and we have no more errors up here. And let's press that button. We click recursive. We can see now in the logs, we won't see hundreds, but just one at the same time here. And it'll eventually increment by one, 11.55 and empty probably because my conditional had a mistake. No, it's not a 20 later, yeah? So it's also quite fast. 10 later, the ID increased by one. So then I have to click cancel and then I can already cancel the entire workflow, which can be useful because there's only one thing to cancel instead of before concurrently 100. Also uh, cool to see is if I look in the backend progress, I can see the number iteration constantly increase if I click refresh to see how fast it's going through. So as you can see, this is also quite fast. Why? Because I'm just editing one thing and not doing 20 things at the same time. But if I were to do 20 things at the same time with 10,000 rows, definitely this recursive workflow is improved. Okay, so we saw how to process lots of data by always calling the same workflow with one less item in it instead of doing it on a list, which is best maybe for lists which are only 100 rows long. We saw the basic setup of both, and we saw kind of how to manage the workflows by clicking underneath logs and seeing the scheduler. And now we see this one is also finished and we no longer see it. And we should also see that the iteration of this one should be, I think, 154 or something around this 153. We should really watch uh, the one conditional. I might have not done it on the last one. Number one, number two. Let's see. So this should stop when iteration is when the iteration reaches the as soon as the iteration is greater than the count we want to stop. No, this should be fine. Okay. Well, I hope this video helped you. And for short tips on kind of recursive workflows, do see the list I'll link below and have a great uh, rest of the day.